G'day and welcome back. It's number three in the series of Choose Your Poison and today's subject is Trimix. Welcome back to the Dive Channel. I'm Richard Harris and we're going to talk about the gas Trimix today. But first of all, I want to give a big shout out to Scuba Pro. Uh, I'm very proud to be a, a Scuba Pro ambassador and I certainly have used their equipment for many, many years and very, very happy to uh, endorse their equipment. I bought my first Scuba Pro reg when, in 1979 when I was 15 years of age and they are still absolutely my preferred regulator for all the different sorts of diving that I do. I've also got their BCs, wetsuits, all sorts of great stuff, reels and torches. They make amazing gear and uh, really reliable and good quality and very reasonably priced. So thanks very much. I don't get paid for this endorsement. I just wanted to give them a good shout out because I really do love their stuff. All right, let's talk about Trimix. Um, now, the previous two episodes of Choose Your Poison, we covered off on air, which is a fantastic uh, gas. We all we all grow up with uh, breathing air and between the, the depths of zero to uh, 30 meters, it's very hard, in my opinion, to go past. It's quick and simple and easy to use. But of course, if you want to extend your bottom times or uh, cut back on decompression, then nitrox is the go-to gas for uh, those shallower depth ranges, uh, particularly between about 15 to 35 meters, I think uh, the greatest benefits of nitrox are seen. But if you wanna go deeper than 35 to 40 meters, then it's wise to start adding some helium to your gas. Now, originally um, helium was added to oxygen to make heliox, just those two gases together. And it was, I think, around about 1916 that helium was proposed as a diving gas because it's a small molecule and very much less dense than nitrogen uh, to breathe. So it makes breathing a lot easier, particularly as the gas becomes more dense with increasing depth. So that's where it was first proposed to be used. Then in the 1920s, uh, the US Navy started doing experiments with it. But it was around about the 1960s that saturation diving, uh, commercial diving, really started to use a lot of heliox, uh, that is oxygen plus helium, for their deep saturation uh, exposures. And um, in that setting, heliox is a fantastic gas because, um, first of all, some of the problems of heliox can be overcome. They are namely um, that it's very, very expensive. So in saturation diving, they can reclaim and then recycle their helium. Obviously, their budgets are a bit bigger than ours as recreational divers as well. Uh, one of the other problems is that helium uh, conducts heat away from you about six times more rapidly than air. So um, heating the gas for commercial diving applications makes good sense and reduces some of the problems of cooling down the divers. Uh, it's very, it makes you very, very cold if you breathe it for a prolonged period of time from open circuit in particular. Rebreathers have a way of warming and humidifying the gas to some degree, so that helps. But with open circuit helium diving, you certainly feel the cold. And if you're uh, foolish enough to inflate your dry suit with high concentrations of helium gas, then you'll certainly feel uh, a bit of a chill from that. So um, heliox as a diving gas uh, didn't really catch on early on with recreational divers. And the other problem with heliox is in recreational technical diving, we do very rapid ascents to significant depths um, compared to saturation divers who have very slow uh, descents. Uh, I hope I said descents the first time. And the problem with rapid descents to significant depths over about 130 metres is a syndrome called high pressure neurological syndrome or high pressure nervous syndrome, which is a, uh, it's not specifically related to the helium per se, but more the pressure effects on uh, the central nervous system. And the initial symptom that you'll see with HPNS is a bit of a tremor in your hands. It can also cause bigger muscle groups to twitch uh, and uh, people also feel uh, dizzy or nauseous or even start to get sleepy, um, which is uh, kind of counterintuitive because it's not a narcotic effect. In fact, helium is one of the least narcotic gases that we use um, in diving. In fact, it's almost, it's essentially impossible to measure any degree of narcosis in the common diving ranges that we use. 
So that is the primary purpose of Trimix and helium containing gases. That is the, the decrease in narcotic effect that we see with nitrogen. So as we extend ourselves beyond the normal recreational depths that we will be uh, diving with nitrox or air, we add helium into the mix to decrease the amount of nitrogen and therefore decrease the narcotic effects of the nitrogen. And, um, you know, it's, it's wise to consider this beyond depths of 30 metres. And certainly uh, if you're in cold water or in caves or in an environment where you really need all your wits about you, it's unwise to go much past 30 metres. In the tropics, in nice clear water, you know, you can probably get away with deeper dives on air. But um, as with all these things in life, there's no hard line in the sand. And the further you go, the increase the risk of uh, significant narcosis and many of us won't really be aware of this until a problem arises and then sure as uh, sure as anything you will definitely be affected by narcosis and your ability to respond in an emergency will definitely be affected and that's very well proven so people who think they're immune to those effects are probably uh, kidding themselves to a large degree so in terms of the naming convention for helium containing gases, I've mentioned heliox, which is a combination of oxygen and helium. Um, more commonly, we'll talk about trimix in recreational technical diving, and that is any combination of oxygen, helium and nitrogen. So uh, trimix can be broadly divided into three groups, I guess. That is normoxic trimix, which contains normal amounts of oxygen. So let's say between 18 and 21%. Gas, uh, a gas mix that would be very safe to breathe at the surface because of the oxygen levels. Then more commonly, as we go deeper, we're using hypoxic trimix, that is anything containing an oxygen level less than 18%. And uh, if you recall from the nitrox uh, talk in particular, uh, high levels of oxygen partial pressure in the brain at depth are a major concern for us as technical divers because of the risk of seizures, particularly as the PO2, the partial pressure of oxygen, uh, rises above 1.6. So hypoxic trimix gases are used to dive uh, deeper to protect us from that high concentration of oxygen or partial pressure of oxygen. Now the other, uh, the third group of uh, trimix gases is hyperoxic uh, trimix, uh, commonly known as triox or helitrox. And um, there's a couple of the training agencies who are quite keen to, to push the idea of using these gases. For example, 26% oxygen and 40% uh, helium, for example, which in the range of um, you know 30 to 40 meters will decrease narcosis, but also um, um, you know potentially have that uh, benefit like nitrox for reducing decompression requirements. Now, I'm not quite convinced whether it's, it's worth going to all the hassle of mixing a trimix for those sorts of depths, but um, you know, certainly if you're going, going to, it's worth having that little bit of extra oxygen in there to increase your bottom time or decrease your decompression obligation. But we're mostly going to talk about hypoxic trimix gases because the, um, you know, the message here is really around deep diving. And uh, the first thing to consider as you're going deeper is how... Um, how to keep the partial pressure of oxygen at the deepest depth of the dive within a safe range. So let's consider to start with a 60 meter dive and uh, we'll use that to illustrate some of the ways we'd plan which gas to construct for that dive and uh, the pros and cons of using trimix in that sort of depth. So 60 meters is well beyond, I think everyone will agree, the safe range for nitrox diving and also for air diving. You know, the PO2 at 60 meters uh, off the top of my head is around about 1.5, so it's getting certainly getting high. But the major risk at that depth, in my view, is the narcosis from um, the nitrogen. Uh, you'll be extremely severely affected by nitrogen narcosis or inert gas narcosis at that depth. And even if you don't feel like you are, as I mentioned, if there's a problem that arises, you'll be uh, very severely affected. The other problem that you'll start to notice uh, beyond about 50 metres, in fact, in theory, beyond 40 metres on air, is that the gas density now becomes a significant factor in the safety of your dive. Now, I'm going to do a separate talk about gas density and respiratory physiology because it is really important in deeper diving. 
But um, suffice to say at this point that uh, the gas density at 60 metres breathing air will become an issue and uh, a large number of divers will start to retain carbon dioxide because of the impairment to effective respiration. And in fact, just about all divers, if they start to work or have problems at that depth, will run into troubles from a respiratory point of view. So we definitely want to replace some of the nitrogen with helium for that benefit alone. That is uh, uh, not just the narcosis, but for the decrease in gas density and the improvement in our work of breathing. So back to our 60 metre dive. Um, so we want to keep the PO2, the partial pressure of oxygen, at 60 metres at 1.4 or less, but let's talk about 1.4. Now, 60 metres is six atmospheres, plus one for the surface makes seven atmospheres absolute. And um, we can work out uh, from a PO2 of 1.4, which is our target, divided by uh, seven gives us 0.2. So 20% oxygen in our breathing gas will give us a PO2 of 1.4 at the uh, at the depth of 60 meters and I'll put some stuff on the whiteboard to make sure that's all clear. Now the next thing to consider is the nitrogen narcosis so at 60 meters we are going to be well and truly narked. I think it's reasonable to aim to halve that so we could talk about an equivalent nitrogen depth or an equivalent narcotic depth, depth END of 30 meters would be far more desirable. And that makes the mass easy as well. So instead of 60 meters, we want the gas to be effectively the same as um, air at 30 meters. So we want to halve the amount of nitrogen in the breathing gas from, let's say 80%, because we're using 20% uh, oxygen, down to 40%. So um, if we breathe a gas that is 20% oxygen, 40% nitrogen, and the remainder of the gas, uh, which is 40% being helium, then we'll have a trimix of 20-40, that is 20% oxygen and 20% helium. That's the naming convention for trimix, oxygen first, uh, helium second. So 20-40 uh, will be a suitable gas for diving to 60 metres. Um, we shouldn't be too narked and our PO2 will be safe. So let's now double the depth and use a a dive of 120 metres depth to illustrate uh, what we're discussing. So 120 metres is 12 atmospheres of pressure plus one for the surface makes 13 atmospheres absolute, ATA. And to work out what the safe percentage uh, fraction of oxygen inside our new breathing gas will be, we divide 1.4 by 13 to arrive at a number which is around about um, 11 or 12 percent but let's call it 10% to keep it simple. Um, so 10% and the next 10% oxygen. The next thing we want to look at is the nitrogen content to get from 120 meters back down to 30 meters. We only want about a quarter of the usual amount of nitrogen in the gas mix. Um, so instead of having 80%, uh, we only want about 20% nitrogen in the breathing gas. So that gives us 10% oxygen, 20% nitrogen, and the remainder, 70%, will be helium. So that's a trimix 1070 in terms of the naming convention. So let's consider a final dive of 200 metres to help us uh, further illustrate the way that we would go about planning the ideal gas for, for this depth. So 200 metres is 20 atmospheres, plus one for the surface, 21 atmospheres absolute. We don't want to go past a PO2 of 1.4. And so um, 1.4 divided by 21, I've already done the maths, it ends up as about 7% oxygen uh, in our gas mix. Now, we still want to aim for an equivalent narcotic depth or END of, say, 30 metres. So that's a quarter, uh, sorry, that's about one seventh of um, the nitrogen that um, we would be breathing at uh, 30 metres if we were on air. So a seventh of um, the, the air at 200 metres would be about 12% nitrogen. So let's call that 10% nitrogen for, for ease of mass. Or let's, actually, let's call it 13% because that'll, uh, that'll uh, total up with the oxygen to 20%. And that leaves us with 80% helium. Um, so a trimix of 780 by naming convention. Now, even with 80% helium in our mix at 200 metres and 13% um, nitrogen, 
we will still have a significant gas density density issue, uh, the equivalent air densi depth density, EADD, um, of around about 54 metres equivalent on air, which is far too high uh, for deep diving. And so we need to fudge the figures a bit to uh, increase the amount of helium uh, and or decrease the amount of nitrogen in that mix. Now, um, one thing we can do is drop the amount of oxygen a bit further because we don't really need 1.4 at the bottom. In, in fact, I would certainly shy away from approaching 1.4. So let's say we bring that back to about 1.2. So the um, the oxygen, I think, will be more like 5% in the, in the breathing mix. And um, as well as doing that, we'll bump the helium up to about 90%, giving us a trimix of 590 and only 10% nitrogen in the mix. And that will bring us uh, back well below that 40 metres equivalent air depth density uh, and back into the safe range. So as you, as you decide if you want to dive even deeper than that, then it becomes increasingly difficult to um, keep the gas density under control. In fact, even using Heliox, um, 595, by the time you're heading down towards about 250 metres, you are starting to um, really encroach on, on the limits of what is probably safe in terms of gas density. But as I say, that's a, that's a topic for another uh, talk. Now, I just want to... Um, touch on you know what are the what are the other issues that arise with diving with a gas light 590 so first of all as we've described you cannot dive that on the surface you'll rapidly lose consciousness and die um, you can't diving dive that until you've um, increased the partial pressure by about four times so that means you need to be down at at least 30 meters before you can safely start breathing that gas and um, there's so much inert gas in 590 that your decompression requirements, the amount of gas you're going to absorb, rapidly increase. Um, and so you want to keep the PO2 as high as possible within the safe range for as long as possible, even during descent and ascent. And really the only way to, to easily do that is with a rebreather, which maintains a constant PO2 set point, for example, 1.2. So as you're descending... Um, it's adding um, uh, sufficient oxygen to keep the, the PO2 uh, up, which is naturally increasing anyway as you descend. But more importantly, as you ascend and the PO2 is naturally falling with the drop in ambient pressure and all that absorbed inert gas is pouring out of your body into the rebreather, the, the rebreather will work to keep the PO2 up and minimise the amount of inert gas that you're breathing. So it's kind of like the best nitrox, if you like, or the best mix for any depth that you're at, and it will give you the most uh, efficient decompression. It also has these advantages in terms of warmth. You know, breathing 90% helium will very drastically cool you down, and a rebreather will offset that to some degree. Um, and most importantly, maybe for some of us, the cost of the helium will be extraordinarily high if you try and do a 200 metre dive on um, on open circuit, you'll need at least 18 cylinders of uh, Trimix and other gases to do that dive, and you know one dive and you've blown thousands of dollars. So really, rebreathers make this sort of diving uh, possible where previously it was impossible. Um, we can talk about the gas density and also some of the decompression issues with helium versus nitrogen in another talk. But I hope I think that's more than enough for today, and I hope uh, you've enjoyed this segment. Thanks very much.